MAPIS is an Excel template. It abbreviates Material Acoustic Properties Analysis Software. The template is free on NDT.net. By way of this PowerPoint presentation, Robert and I would like to assemble a step-by-step -step illustration of how the template can be used. Since the mid-1990s, we have been working with the development of polymers for acoustic lenses and medical phantoms. For some time, the analysis of these acoustic properties was carried out in the NDE lab at the University of Toronto under the supervision of Professor Tony Sinclair. Frequency analysis was done over a range of frequencies by using matched pairs of transmit and receive probes with overlapping bandwidths. Around 2015, we decided it would be nice to have an in-house system for doing the acoustic characterization. I figured there must also be others in the NDT community that might like to do their own analysis. In order for the utility to be easily accessible to almost everyone, I wanted the program to be able to run in Excel. Around that time, one of the PhD candidates in the NDE lab was Ben Turnbull. I asked him if he would be able to make me such a software utility. I'm sure he would have preferred programming in some other language other than Excel, but he told me that it could be done. There would be limitations and it would be slow compared to dedicated math programs, but it would accomplish my goal of making it easily accessible to most potential users in our NDT community. By July of 2016, we had a template prepared and posted it on the technical discussion forum on NDT.net. Coincidentally, around the same time, a very similar paper was published from the 19th World Conference on NDT. It was entitled, Method for Acoustic Characterization of Materials in Temperature. And they used a similar setup to derive the change in velocity with respect to temperature of two refracting wedge materials, Rexolite and Peak. By December of 2016, we had assembled and tested over two dozen different materials and published a short paper to indicate how the Excel template could provide reasonably accurate results. That paper was Determining Approximate Acoustic Properties of Materials, and it was on NDT.net. In order to use the MAPIS template, you're going to need to have hardware that can capture ultrasonic waveforms. This will include an ultrasonic pulsar receiver that is linear, that is doubling in amplitude for every 6 dB added, an analog to digital converter with software that provides an A-scan display in units of time and has an A-scan data export, preferably TXT format, however CSV can also be used. The preferred method is to use an immersion setup. This will require an immersion tank and transmit and receive probes with matched frequency and size, the tank has to be long enough to ensure that the sample is in the far field of the transmitter. This usually means using small element sizes, unless you have a large tank. There should be alignment capability for X, Y, Z, and theta motion, and the sample holder with a goniometer mount. Ultrasonic velocity is a function of temperature. Therefore, we're going to need a thermometer to measure the water temperature. Sample thickness is critical. To determine the thickness, we recommend a digital vernier caliper capable of measurements to 0.01 millimeter. Once the data has been acquired, you're then going to need access to Microsoft Excel. Then you can use the template. Here are the components used in our lab. We have a tank, dimensions approximately 30 by 40 centimeters and 20 centimeters deep. Inside the tank is a platform to hold the transmitter and it is squared to the inside of the tank. The receiver probe is on a search tube affixed to an optical bench slide. This makes it adjustable for height, offset using a micrometer actuator, and skew by simply twisting the tube. The sample is mounted in a separate holder that allows the beam to pass through the sample and is equipped with a goniometer that permits the sample to be pivoted and the angle indicated. The sample holder is also on a slide that's attached to the optical bench. 
we make our sample thickness measurements using our digital vernier caliper. The probes in our tank are 3 mm diameter and have a nominal frequency of 5 MHz. This produces a near field length in water of about 8 to 10 mm. The probe positions will be optimized using the A-scan display. However, an initial course alignment can be made by sliding the receiver up to the transmitter and adjusting the height, offset and skew so that the faces match closely. Now we can add water. We add water to a level that ensures no surface reflections will occur at the receiver. The water should be distilled and deaerated. Water that is not deaerated will result in air bubbles forming on all surfaces, including the probes and sample. Once the water is added to well above the probes, and we can see no air bubbles trapped on any surfaces of interest, we measure the water temperature. With our data acquisition system on, and the transmitter and receiver probes connected to the instrument, we can now see an A-scan display signal. We next pull the receiver probe away from the transmitter until we are at our working distance. This should leave sufficient space between the probes for us to eventually place the sample between them without having the sample in the near field of the transmitter. The range should now be reduced to about 10 microseconds and we can make fine adjustments to optimize the probe position by making small adjustments to the vertical position, offset and skew while monitoring the A-scan display to maximize the response. Having adjusted the small range for our data acquisition window, we can now adjust the delay to see the water signal at the midway point in the window and adjust the amplitude to approximately 80 or 90 percent full screen height. At this point we should record all the parameters of interest in case we would like to repeat the test. These would include probe parameters such as probe size and frequency, pulsar parameters, voltage, pulse duration, number of cycles, the receiver parameters, gain or attenuation settings, filters and averaging, water temperature, and digitization frequency. The A scan of the water path without any sample is then captured and saved to a file with suitable information to identify it. In this case, the signal is just the water, so perhaps water 20 degrees could suffice as the file name. A measurement with the sample is made next. We place the sample in the holder ensuring it is approximately centered and squared to the mounting such that the major surface will be perpendicular to the beam when placed in the tank. Now we place the sample in the tank between the transmit and receive probes and adjust the goniometer to ensure that the sample is perpendicular to the beam. For most materials, we will usually observe that the time and the amplitude of the signal has changed. Moving the sample back and forth between the probes makes no difference to the signal or time or amplitude until you reach the near field of the transmitter. We can again capture the A-scan signal and save it to a file with a name that relates to the longitudinal mode of the sample. If the sample is very attenuative or thick, it may require adding gain or reducing attenuation. We record any added gain required. The signal amplitude with the sample present might typically be adjusted if the signal with the sample drops to less than about 20% of the screen height. I find it convenient to make the changes in multiples of 6 dB or 20 dB because these added gains will be converted to a scaling factor in the, in the MAPIS software. Without removing the sample, rotate the goniometer while observing the A-scan signal. Observe the signal from the longitudinal pulse drop as the sample is rotated, and then watch for a new signal to rise at a slightly later time than the longitudinal signal had occurred. This new signal will be the result of the shear mode in the sample, for, ma for materials that can support a shear mode. Carefully adjust the rotation until the signal is maximized. The L mode 
should no longer be present because the maximum shear mode on its own will occur just after the first critical angle. Capture the A-scan and save it to a file noting the angle of rotation and the fact that it's a shear mode waveform. Now the waveform data can be moved to the location where the material analysis will occur. In all cases, we saved our waveform data in TXT format, which saves the gated signal information in two columns, one in increments of time, microseconds, and the other in increments of amplitude, in volts in our case. Our first step in the analysis of the data just captured is to prepare a directory for the sample material. Copy the map as template and paste it in the directory. Remember to use version 7.2. In that same directory, now paste the water, longitudinal, and if available, shear A-scan waveform files. Open the Excel template, ignoring the notes on the links that are missing, and make sure that you allow editing. Follow the steps as noted in the Test Description tab. Complete the Test Description Entry Selection for the equipment. Before advancing any further, we recommend that you save the Excel file with the name of the sample using the Save As feature. On the same test description uh, worksheet, we now import the TXT files. There is a separate process for CSV file format. Next, we make analysis pages for each waveform. Once you have entered a name for the data in the red cells, there is a prompt that a datasheet needs to be made. Clicking on Create Datasheet automatically generates the worksheet and gives it the name that you entered in the red cell, for example, Water Data. Once you've created the data sheets for each of the modes, go to the data sheet one at a time and import a scan data files. Make sure you import the correct file name and do not mix up the water, long, or shear files. Having selected the TXT file name that you want to see, the waveform is displayed. We then place a gate that starts at the front and back of the region of interest in the water a scan. After gate placement on the water A-scan signal, we move on to the longitudinal and shear analysis data sheets and similarly import the files and place gates around the signals of interest. If gain was added to bring the longitudinal or shear signal to an amplitude that could be better seen on the A-scan, a scale factor is used on this sheet. If the amplitude of the signal was increased by a factor of 2, for example 6 dB gain added, the scale factor is 0.5. If the increment was 20 dB, the scale factor is 0.1. This changes the range of the units on the vertical scale.
The software will attempt to identify the relevant point on the waveform of the long and shear signals to match the water signal, for example the first positive peak. If signals are distorted, users can adjust the point on the waveform being used as the reference. In order for Excel to carry out the next step, the number of time samples in each gate must be identical. Ensure that all the gates are the same size, that is, the same number of data points along the time base. The worksheet for the FFT of each waveform is identified as a spectrum sheet. By clicking on Run FFT for each waveform, we then generate the fast Fourier transform of the signal. This can take several minutes and is probably the only downside of using Excel. The calculation of the FFT requires that you have the analysis packs from Excel loaded. Once all the FFT computations are completed, you can move on to making the data analysis plots from each waveform to see the time and frequency plots. We can now adjust the frequency that provides the best indication of the useful frequency range for the probe being used. For example, in our case with the a nominal 5 MHz probe, this might be in the range of 2 to 8 MHz. My probes are relatively highly damp, so I have a good range of frequencies over which the frequency domain could be valid. The default for the attenuation analysis of the normalized power spectrum is set to minus 6 dB. However, this can be adjusted by the user and it applies to the plot only not to the computations, so you can adjust it after the FFT is calculated. When the computation is completed, you get three new plots on the spectrum page. Moving to the time domain and frequency domain comparison tabs, you can now select pulses to compare their characteristics in a selected range of time or frequency. You view the plot comparisons in their separate worksheets. There is a summary of the material properties provided on a separate worksheet. When both longitudinal and shear velocities can be determined, a full set of calculations is used to generate the table. Note that the temperature and density that were entered on the test description worksheet are used to calculate many of the values, so ensure they are correct. Temperature in degrees Celsius and density in kilograms per meter cubed. The MAPIS template has been configured to easily permit importing waveforms that have been saved in TXT format. Some ultrasonic equipment manufacturers use the TXT format with tab separated columns. Other manufacturers provide the waveform data in CSV format, where CSV denotes comma separated values. To use data from software, that has stored the waveform in CSV format, MAPIS requires a conversion of the CSV file to TXT. Place the CSV files in the same directory that you will be using for the sample you are working on. Open the CSV file in Excel by simply double clicking on the file in the directory where it is stored. You should be able to see two columns of numbers. In our example, the data acquired is from the pulse echo test on a 6 mm thick step in a carbon steel step wedge. Column A contains time intervals in microseconds, and column B contains amplitude values. In this example, the units of amplitude are a percentage of full screen height. In order for the MAPIS template to correctly implement the automatic import of the file and place the values in the correct cells, we will insert a row at row 1. Now in cell A1, we can write the unit of time, microseconds.
When we move to the Excel Save function, there is a large selection of file types that can be saved too. For Mathis work, we will then save the file as an ms-dos txt file. The template can now be used to import the A-scan waveform in the same way we demonstrated for the original txt file when importing the file in step 2 of the test description tab. Next we consider pulse echo signals. When using pulse echo data, after recording the relevant instrument parameters, we must switch the type entry from transmit receive to pulse echo. Although there is an entry cell for the temperature, the water temperature will not be used when using two multiples of a pulse echo setup. When pulse echo is selected in step one section, the data entry option changes in the step three section. Now we see that there are two red cells in each of the longitudinal and bulk speed categories. In our example, there are only two multiples captured in the longitudinal mode. We call them long one and long two. In addition to naming the signals, we must also identify which multiples are being used. The template uses the names entered in the echo one and echo two name cells to identify the data sheets that will be generated. The echo number entered after the name is used to calculate the total distance in the sample. For example, if the signals originate from the first and second back wall, the software uses the difference of 2 minus 1 to multiply the thickness of the sample by 1. In some cases, it might be desirable to use the interval between the water to sample interface in an immersion setup and the second back wall. This would increase the total distance traveled to the equivalent of twice the sample thickness. To do so would require entering the echo number as 3 instead of 2 as in our sample. Using an immersion setup will also require being aware of the phase change that occurs between water sample interface and the back wall multiples. This should be addressed by manually adjusting the reference signal position in the data sheets. Clicking on Create Data Sheet now generates two tabs in the template, one labeled Long 1 Data and the other Long 2 Data. To import the waveform in the data sheet, we can again click on the pull down icon for the data source and select the TXT file seen there for the pulse echo signal. In this case, the reference point type that we selected is the minimum which is the maximum value in the negative direction. It, this seems to be the clearest indication for a reference point. We can then move to long two data tab and select the multiple that occurs slightly later in time. At this point, the template has enough information to calculate the bulk longitudinal velocity. It can be seen calculated in the materials property worksheet. 59.25 meters per second is indicated in the acoustic velocity for the step wedge sample, and together with the density of steel, the acoustic impedance can be calculated. If the waveform data collection had also included the use of SH shear wave transducers, it would be possible to collect two multiples of the thickness in shear mode. With shear mode velocity, other parameters can also be calculated. Running the spectrum analysis on the pulse echo data can provide an estimate of attenuation based on total energy in the two echoes and the reflection coefficient. Some of the other plots, such as phase velocity and attenuations, will not be valid. This concludes our description of the use of the MAPIS template. Thank you for your interest. We would welcome any discussions on the forum at ndt.net or you can contact me directly at egenzel at mri.on.ca.